The average citizen of ancient Egypt would see the sun rise every morning, the sun set every night. They'd see the moon and the stars against an infinite blackness, feel the wind, see plants grow, experience floods and famines and pestilence. But they would have very little to explain these natural phenomena around them. This is where the gods of ancient Egypt and the mythology behind them came into play. Each god had specific roles and abilities in ancient Egypt. Some played a large role in the day-to-day -day activities of ancient Egyptians, such as Thoth, known as the god of writing, or Ra, the sun god. And some gods played much smaller and specific roles, such as the goddess Kebhet, whose sole role was to offer cool, fresh water to the souls of the dead as they awaited judgment in the afterlife. With somewhere over 2,000 separate deities with differing roles and abilities, the gods of ancient Egypt went some way to explain the immortal journey of every human. But where did the mythology originate from? Who were the main gods? And what importance did they have to your everyday ancient Egyptian? Well, make sure to stick around because this short 7 minute documentary will cover all and more. And if you like this video, please subscribe and let me know in the comments if there are any other topics you would like to see me cover. So let's begin with the origins of the Egyptian gods. The mythology of ancient Egypt and the gods that went with it shaped the culture of the ancient civilization. However, the development of the mythology is difficult to trace. I mean, this all did happen around 5,000 years ago, so there's a lot of assumptions that are made about its origins. Like I mentioned back at the start of the video, every day the sun would rise. Every year the Nile would flood, and this would make the land fertile, which created an orderly pattern that was at high risk of disruption. If there was a particularly low flood, there would be a famine, and if there was a high flood, there would be the risk of crops being destroyed. This led Egyptians to see the sun and the water as symbols of a cycle that was characterised by order, chaos, and renewal, themes which were adopted into Egyptian religious thought. The gods themselves were created to explain certain aspects of the ancient Egyptians' experience. Using the examples we've already mentioned, Ra was created as the god of the sun. Osiris was created as the god of agriculture, life and vegetation. This understanding led Egyptians to begin worshipping these gods to invoke the cycle and certain aspects of life. This took the form of rituals in daily life such as offering food and drinks to Osiris to encourage a good harvest or to have drawings or statues of the goddess of childbirth, Tore, in their home to bring good luck when pregnant. This culture of mythology and ritual spread its way through ancient Egyptian daily life and nearly every aspect of existence was given a god to explain its being and origin. Even ones you might not expect such as Sapa, the god of centipedes, Kenti Ka, the god of noses of the dead, or even Dua, the god of toilets. Of course, these gods aren't the main ones. As with other ancient mythologies of the Norse or ancient Greece, there is a story told to explain the origins of the gods, the universe, and human beings. And with it, it sets out who the more powerful gods are, who the weaker gods are, and creates an understanding of the relationships between them. More on that later. Like you might expect, the Egyptian creation myth is complex and ends up offering several contradictory accounts. However, from what is recounted on the sacred hieroglyphic writings found in the pyramids and various temples and tombs across Egypt, it was believed before Earth there was an infinite expanse of dark, chaotic and directionless water called Nun. The first god, Atom, the god of pre- and post-existence, willed himself into being from this chaotic state and created Earth as a sacred landscape devoid of chaos chaos and characterised by order. Atom then went on to create two offspring, his son, Shu, the god of air, and his daughter, Tefnut, the goddess of rainfall. The twins separated the sky and the waters and produced their own children named Geb, the god of earth, and Nut, the goddess of the sky. Geb gave birth to a mound of land that Atom, who represented the sun, could rest upon. Geb and Nut created four more offspring, Set, the god of chaos, Osiris, the god of order, Nephtes, the goddess of the air, and Isis, the goddess of the moon. These nine deities made up the first generations of the Egyptian gods. Humans were created when Atom, otherwise known as Ra, lost his eye. He sent his offspring Shu and Tefnut to retrieve it, but the eye did not want to return and shed several tears from which humans were born. From then, the eye of the sun god became a symbol of creation in ancient Egypt and remains today as one of the most well-known symbols from the era, not to be confused with the eye of Horus. After humans were created, the gods and mankind lived side by side, with the gods increasing in numbers and coexisting peacefully, until, as Atom grew old and the humans began to plot against him, he ascended to the heavens, taking the other gods with him and appointing pharaohs as the anointed rulers in ancient Egypt. 
This origin story for the gods, earth and humanity goes some way to explain the makeup of ancient Egyptian culture and the order of their society. It props up the pharaohs and puts forward an explanation for the natural forces in the world. From there, thousands of gods were worshipped and created in Egyptian life and they all had different relationships with each other. It was common for a family to have effigies of specific gods in their houses. For example, a scribe might have symbols of Thoth, the god of writing in their home, or wear items of jewellery with Thoth symbol on their body. Or if there has been a death in the family, you would pay homage to Anubis, the god of death, to ensure safe passage into the afterlife. And there are examples of this, with Ramses II sending a statue of Khonshu, that's right, the god from Moon Knight, to a friendly Syrian king to cure his daughter's illness, as it was believed Khonshu could drive out bad spirits. This goes to show the different ways that ancient Egyptians would have a relationship with the gods in their everyday life. Not all gods would be worshipped, however. With the view in ancient Egyptian mythology that every god represented a force, even the bad forces had to be represented. Apophis, who was the god of chaos and the enemy of Atum, would be feared rather than worshipped. Or even the god Set, who was originally seen as a benevolent god but soon became a figure of evil, with him even slaying another god, Osiris. But while we have explained why the gods were created, explain the actual origin in Egyptian mythology of the gods and what effect the deities will play in everyday life, one thing we haven't explained is, what's up with the animal heads? Not all of the gods do have the heads of animals. The first god, Atom, is depicted as a man, but in one of his other versions, Ra, he is depicted with the head of a falcon. These animal heads were used to symbolise certain characteristics of each god. For example, Sekhmet, the goddess of the hot desert sun, was depicted as a lioness because she is seen as so ferocious and destructive. Or, my favourite Egyptian god Thoth, who was depicted with the head of an ibis, used to symbolise the moon with the crescent of the bird's beak. Or even Anubis, who was depicted with the head of a jackal, an animal that was associated with death in ancient Egypt. And it didn't stop there, with there being countless Egyptian gods depicted with animal heads ranging from cats to crocodiles and even a hippopotamus. And there you have it, the Egyptian gods explained in 7 minutes. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel where I'll be making more content like this. I really appreciate you watching and look forward to seeing you again next time.